Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's movie vlog. I am the critic who is a cynic, coping well, and today as baby Thor is resting, I have his monitor right here, so if the uh, video has to be cut short or has a random edit, that will be the reason why. And if you hear any random, you know, he's he's been mostly asleep, but every now and then he'll wake up and make a couple little sounds and then he'll fall back asleep. So if you hear any of that in the background, that is the reason why. But I actually have some box office news for everybody. Yes, the box office does still exist, even though it is slowly dying because no one is going to see movies because no major studio is releasing any new major releases this year. Again, self-defeating proposition there. We actually do still have some numbers coming out. And so Blumhouse, uh, which again is working here in this case with Universal. And Universal, interestingly enough, is one of the only major studios that has been consistently releasing newer films. Not any huge releases, not any huge films, but still newer content. And again, that is how you're going to drive people to go back to the theater is not by providing classic movies because yes that might appease people like me and other people that want to see these classics back on the big screen but as far as general audiences are, are, are concerned and getting the large uh large numbers of general audiences being concerned that you need to have newer releases. So Universal is one of the only groups that's really doing that with these smaller, lower budget films and actually mostly has been horror films, especially obviously with October and now going into the beginning of November. But we have these numbers here from the new horror comedy Freaky starring Vince Vaughn. And this is a, a one that I've seen a trailer for. It is kind of interesting. Uh, it seems to be playing on modern day identity politics just a little bit here, uh, but it seems to be doing it in a comedic way. So again, I've not seen the film yet so I cannot really judge it for its merits except for what has been revealed from the trailer so far but as you can see Freaky is on its way to a four million dollar weekend box office opening which doesn't sound like a whole lot and in comparison to its five million dollar budget which is a little bit on the higher end I feel for a lot of the Blumhouse horror films but still definitely cheaper than most other films coming out or that were supposed to come out this year. It is definitely a step in the right direction. It is definitely something that I think Blumhouse and Universal are probably mostly happy with, as I imagine that they will probably try and get this film available on PVOD or VOD uh, much more quickly and much sooner than it would have typically been in a normal cycle post or rather pre COVID era. So let's go ahead and dive into this Saturday AM update from deadline box office here. It says universal Blumhouse genre body swap comedy freaky starring Vince Vaughn took in $1.45 million yesterday on Friday, including the Thursday night previews around 200,000, uh, $200,000 for Thursday previews of a horror film. Very close to October, very close to Halloween is definitely not very good. But as I said before, these are numbers that make a lot of sense in the COVID era that we live in. Um, because again, studios are basically forcing the hands of theaters to essentially die a very slow and painful death. On what looks to be a $4 million opening at 2,472 theaters, this would be a film that typically probably would be closer to 3,000 theaters, which obviously would have also had more cash per theater. And as I would say in a typical weekend, I would not have been surprised to see this film make 15 to $20 million. And I think that would actually be on a weaker weekend uh, because these Blumhouse horror films tend to actually make a lot more um, as, at least compared to its budget and how much it's made so far. It says here that Universal, the only major Hollywood studio out putting out consistent fresh content, uh, fresh wide content during the pandemic, can claim a three week streak at number one between Focus's Come Play over Halloween and that labels Let Him Go last weekend and the parent studios Freaky this weekend. Other benchmarks, Freaky reps the second number one opening for Blumhouse this year after The Invisible Man, which debuted at $28.2 million. Again, that was much earlier in the year, kind of at the very beginning of the COVID era. Uh, I was before the theater, that film came out before theaters uh, saw massive closures, but obviously the numbers for The Invisible Man did get impacted slightly by the worldwide market kind of shutting down or starting the process of shutting down during the run of the invisible man but again that had a debut of 28.2 million i imagine that you would have seen a maybe not exactly the same type of opening for freaky had you know theaters actually gotten newer content from these studios and had the studios not balked and not really kowtowed to these crazy governors shutting everything down but Again, uh, that's neither here nor there because $4 million in the COVID era is, is not nearly as bad as it could have been. Uh, the last time star Vince Vaughn notched a number one opening was with 2009's Couples Retreat, which was also a universal picture film that was not really all that great, but interesting. Vince Vaughn back at the number one slot really isn't saying a whole lot when your number one film is, is expected to make $4 million when even in an off weekend, you find newer films getting at least, what, 10 to $50 million in its opening? Yeah. 
definitely not good times for the theater overall. It says here, Freaky, like all of the Universal Focus recent releases, is part of a shortened theatrical window POV share deal with AMC Theaters. The film, which is unusual for a comedy, notch 84% on Rotten Tomatoes from critics, which we all know doesn't mean a damn thing because those critics are a bunch of hacks. With that being said, though, it is interesting to say the very least that Freaky is indeed a part of this deal that Universal has with AMC. And since obviously we know that Regal Cinemas are closed all across the country, Cinemark is, is probably one of the third largest theater chains and has been really the most active, I would say, among all the theater chains so far. It was one of the first to reopen and has, you know, been very clear that it wants to remain open for as off for as much as it possibly can whereas amc has been talking about because it was already in financial trouble possibly having to sell off various stock options possibly even having a chance of going bankrupt again a lot of really bad things going on so you have the two largest theater chains one who has closed all of its theaters now they just recently uh, said that they were going to close their last remaining theaters talking here about regal in new york and in california and now of course amc is in the position of it possibly having to go through some financial issues because it is going through financial issues, uh, but also limiting a lot of its show times. Uh, one of the local AMCs near me is only opening Friday through Sunday. So that's the kind of stuff that we're dealing with right now. And that's the reason why it's more important than ever to go support if indeed you want local theaters to remain open, whether it's a part of a chain or whether it's a family run pop, you know, mom and pop, if you have the ability to go, if you have the ability to support those theaters, now would be the time to go. You know, now would be the time to show that support because at the end of the day, you have studios that are going to sit back and expect the government to essentially give bailouts to these companies to give bailouts to these theater chains to keep them afloat. And will they? Maybe, maybe not, right? Who knows what the hell's going to happen in Congress with these different deals. And obviously you've got these changing administrations happening uh, behind the scenes as well at both, you know, the higher, higher levels of government and the lower levels of government too. So who knows how people are going to vote? Who knows how these numbers are going to end up playing out? But I think that it's a very dangerous game that the studios are playing right now, leaving the theaters essentially uh, floundering for air, you know, floundering for any type of support. Because as I said, if they don't have new films and consistently new films, big budget films, tentpole films that are going to bring people back, they're never going to be able to get back to where they were. Because even if they were to get any type of help from federal aid or statewide aid, it would only keep them open enough to keep things running, to keep the lights on. That's not by its nature. If you throw money at the theaters, that's not going to bring people back. And theaters need people back in the seats. And I know that the whole process of Hollywood is let's just sit and wait until next year because things might be better for us politically. Things might be better for us financially speaking too because of certain people in power. And so therefore that will be the time that we finally start to push these films back out, take the risk, maybe take some initial losses to get people back in theaters, which to me, I think is just a crappy thing. I think it's a crappy thing that these studios are doing because obviously them playing politics behind the scenes with their damn films and what they're doing is obviously they have every right to do that with their movies. But by the fact that they are essentially destroying these theater chains destroying both the higher level AMCs and Regals and also the more localized regional theater chains too and local mom and pop theaters as well. It's just downright despicable and really, of course, ticks me off. But anyway, we have, of course... Box office numbers here. Do you think Freaky will make its money back and $4 million opening weekend is nice. However, it tends to be the case that films will make about half, if not more, uh, rather less than what they make in their second weekend. Typically, you see around a 50% or higher drop from week one to week two is what I mean. And so that means the film will in all likelihood make maybe close to $2 million next week. And if that's the case, it's at $6 million, And then it's basically continuing to drop off after that. And I do think that the one thing it has going for it are these PVOD sales, uh, because obviously they can expect to probably make a decent amount of money from those sales, and they only have to wait two weeks, really. So after next week, they'll be able to release it onto those services and try and make even more money. So I personally think there is a good chance that they will make the money back, especially since it only costs them about $5 million to produce. Probably cost them a lot less to actually market the film. You know, normally what I'll do is I'll take half the budget and add that on top. And so typically speaking, the film in total with production and marketing would have cost maybe $7.5 million to actually put out there. I don't think the marketing would have been nearly as much this time around, though, because there really hasn't been a whole lot 
of, I feel, a need for marketing because there's not a lot of theaters open. I feel like not a lot of theaters are going to be, you know, <laughs> charging the same rates or, you know, who knows what's really happening with that, buying commercials and all that kind of stuff. I feel like the whole era, the whole genre has changed, which means that crunching these box office numbers, once everything does get to a more normal, I don't think we'll ever get back to complete normal as far as the box office is concerned, but it means we'll have to change the way that we look at these numbers because the old standards are easily having fallen away at this point. But let me know your thoughts about this and anything I talked about in the comment section below. If you like this video, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe. It helps out a lot. You are all amazing and beautiful people. Help you have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge shout out to all of my November Patreon and subscribe star members, Albertus Magnus, Animation Commentator, Brian P., David Bobrizic, Dion, Divex, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Miller, Hail Father, Father Damien Cook, Frank the Tank and the Shawhan Wiener Dog Clan, Harold Francis, The Hunker Chunky Funky Monkey, Inflamed Wood, It's a Trap Productions, Jason Clark, Jacob Juice, Jay, Jeffrey Toon, Jonathan Carney, Kenneth Camiel, Laura Story Times Two, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mike Jackson, Mr. Peabody, and his evil twin, On to June, Orange Hat Reviews, Out of Step with Reality, Outpost Dyer, Riff Magos, Rosetta Allen, Steve Glasker, Teresa Martin, or Miss Martin Muses, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, and Tina B, the Empress of the Universe. Thank you all for being my Patreon members, and a shout out, of course, to my Subscribe Star members Stand For, John B, Perpetual Punster, Robert Revo, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, Darkstar57, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., US888209 Fast, Dean Heiss, J. Rod, the Beer Guru, Nabadon G. Adams, and ZK Man. Thank you to my Subscribe Star and Patreon members for supporting me for this month. I hope that you are enjoying your perks of getting access to things like a podcast, to giveaways, and also, of course, to other exclusive content. I know I've fallen a little bit behind with the birth of Baby Thor, and so I thank you very much for your patience and, of course, for your continued support. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.